Thank you for joining us for today's webinar, Digital Transformation for Automation System Operators and Power Generation Companies. My name is Jan Eik Wonstad and I'm your host for this webinar. Let me start with a brief introduction to who we are. Uh, some of you know us very well. Armitech has been working on digitalization projects for customers in the process industry for more than 25 years. We are based in Norway, but operate today as a fully digital company, providing services to customers all over Europe. We are 30 employees, mostly covering the area of software and analytic engineers. We work very closely with partners and customers. We have been a partner for USI, now Aveva, since 1996. I know there are several representatives from Aveva with us today, so thank you for joining. Much appreciated. Dimension Software from New Zealand is also a partner we have been working very closely for the last couple of years. The company behind the product Asset Intellect, uh, the enterprise visualization solution that is a part of the digital transformation for both Fingri and Agile, Agile the presenters uh, today. Dimension Software is therefore co-organizing this webinar together with us in Armitech. We have several representatives from Dimension with us today and they will be happy to answer any questions you may have during and after this webinar. We can now hand it over to Mark Faith from AGL and the AGL is Australia's biggest uh, power company. So it's over to you, uh, Mark. Thank you for um, having me today. Okay, so uh, what I'd like to do today is talk about AGL um, and really its asset intellect journey um, and we'll go into what we've done <clears throat> with asset intellect some of our challenges and I'll, I'll, I'll show you some of the things that uh, we've done uh, we are on an I, uh, IOT journey uh, like Fingrid uh, as well uh, and I'd love to talk about that with anybody at the at the end or in in the future uh, via email or, or things like that so but Let's go on an asset intellect journey. A little background on myself. There's a picture of me. My background is I am a fitter and turner or mechanic by trade. I went and did uh, my advanced certificate engineering. I also have an extensive condition monitoring background. Um, I have spent my whole life in electrical generation, uh, obviously on the mechanical side. At the moment, I manage the AGL OSI Pi data ecosystem. And when I say ecosystem, that is all about getting the data from the control systems that we have, managing the uh, Pi archives uh, through also to the um, software on top of uh, OSI Pi that we use, the bolt-ons, the things like Seek, the dimension software predict it. Uh, I manage all those. I also manage the operational diagnostic center for AGL. That's where we use our advanced pattern recognition software called predict it. Uh, we have a team uh, based in Melbourne, our Victoria office, and uh, they're monitoring all uh, uh, somewhere in the city of 50,000 pi points uh, for any deviations. Um, managing the IoT development and rollout for our generation sites. Um, that's a very interesting and developing area, um, as we saw from FinGrid. Um, my main passion is imp influencing um, preventive to the proactive uh, maintenance activities through the uh, use of data. My interests Obviously, new technology. I love to brew beer, and um, when I'm not doing that and not affected by the beer, I am motorbike riding. So uh, with my with my children. So that's a bit about me. Um, AGL introduction. Um, AGL is a leading introduction um, integrated essential service provider. So we have a proud history of 184 years. Uh, we started off lighting the first street lamp in Sydney in 1841, which was before my time. Um, and since then, um, we have been leading change. Uh, we deliver roughly 4.2 million 
um, gas and electricity and telecommunication um, supplies to, to our residents. Uh, obviously catering from our small houses to retail customers. Uh, we operate in uh, the largest portfolio uh, within Australia. We have roughly 11, just over 11,000 megawatts, uh, which is approximately just over 20% of the total generation capacity for Australia. We have everything from brown coal, black coal, um, natural gas, um, thermal sites to peaker plants um, to hydro, solar and, and wind assets and starting our journey into batteries. Uh, it's an ever-changing um, portfolio and we have to be able to keep up with that. So there's some pictures on the right-hand side. That's our solar plant. Uh, we have one of our hydro plants emitting water into the uh, one of our rivers. Uh, Hallett um, and some of our wind turbines, which I know you guys see a lot in, in Europe. So when we talk in AGL and we talk about data and we, we're, we're working across our wide range of generation assets, we have some challenges around that. And that is all the systems that we are using um, whether they're corporate systems or site systems, how do we get to them? Um, and once you start to get so many of them, it becomes an overload. And you have to start thinking about where do I go to get this report or where do I go to get this dashboard? Where do I go to get this information? So if we look at it um, on our perspective, it was we have OSI Pi and we have dashboarding. Where do I go to get the dashboarding? Um, and how do I know if I'm using Pi Vision that that dashboard is a controlled version or the up-to-date version of that dashboard? Because quite easily, someone could have copied that dashboard. I do a search and find out that I'm being used and I'm using misinformation. How do I find all the reporting systems within the business? There's finance reports, there's environmental reports, there's engineering reports, there's maintenance reports, there's performance reports. How, and, and, and if you let them go off on their own merry way, which I'm happy for them to do, they will use different systems. We also have different document libraries. Some people, and I don't know if anybody here has... Um, had the um, experience of using SharePoint and somebody within the business says it's a document management system. No, it's not a document management system, but some people will try to use it as a document management system. Then we have this new thing called Teams and we're going to make thousands of teams and I lose my way when I'm trying to find uh, a team site or some information. We also have business units using local drives and now we've got cloud as well on top of that. So our challenge is how do I get all the information into a position where I can find it easily and and make it a benefit for the business because a report that I can't find isn't worth anything. So the other thing we need to look at is it needs to have ease of navigation it needs to have the multiple program integration, being able to put all those things that we just talked about on the left available. Ideally, it's web-based. Again, a, a bonus would be mobility, that um, nowadays we can have things on our phones. Can I have version control? Can I make sure that the data I'm showing has been um, proofed? and it's reliable and people who go on there know that it's the right data. And as an added benefit, can I get alarm and events? How do we bring all this together? And that was a challenge for us at AGL that we've had for many, many years. And if, if and I don't mean to put IT down, if anybody is working um, with their IT, IT are pushing out all these different things like we've got on the left and for us they don't really show us how to use them or how we're going to be governed by them. So we had to take our own step within the generation area. 
asset intellect was a logical choice for us. We have a hierarchy of navigation, which is everybody finds very easy. We have consolidated information. We can eliminate data duplication. We have our plumbing events and it's got version control. So it ticked all our boxes. So from the left-hand side here, um, if you can see my arrow, hopefully you can. Actually, I might um, see if I can change that to a laser pointer. In this area here, we have our asset views. In here, we have what we call our asset health. Then we can break down into our business reporting. So the beauty of it is that the people can go in and find the data really easily and quickly. And it has been a game changer for us. So in one instance, this is our landing page. Hopefully I should be able to click. No, arrow down. Then what we've got here is our D-rate page. Now, ideally, what we've got is this asset view is used by our managers and our executive managers within AGL. So we don't want them to delve down too deep. We put the information that they want to see at a very high level. So it's a bit of an idea on how we use it. So at the top here, we have our D-rate. Now, just, this is linked to an, um, an SQL server which is updated through a system called Archie Duet, um, and it tracks all our losses that we are suffering at the moment. So at the moment, we can see Bayswater on the 26th of April. It was down for two hours and 52 minutes. It was a forced outage. We had a problem with the mill, um, and it was a mill geared to a spray fault, and that's our generation that we were capable of doing. It's up there. The managers can see it very quickly. Um, very easy for them to find. Uh, the next thing we have is next from here, we can click to the um, renewables overview. Uh, we have now, this is our network going from Queensland. So if you look at our network within Eastern Australia, we our network is all interlinked between Queensland, New South Wales, Victoria, South Australia and Tasmania. We have a real problem with solar, and that is we are long and skinny. So as the sun moves over from from, where, uh, from east to west, it drops off very quickly as well. So that's one of our challenges within the grid. Um, we can quickly get an overview of what the um, national energy market is doing, uh, which way the flows are running between state to state through the interconnectors, and then we can see what our renewable fleets are doing as well. So uh, just a very quick overview that they can see. Then what we can do is we can, and what we've done within the system is we're still developing this. There's no way that this is a totally mature system that you're seeing today. We have our hydro here. So from the asset operations, I can drill that into hydro. I can look at our West Kiowa um, asset that was built in the 1940s and what I've done here is I have replicated a HDMI screen on site so if you go into one of the cabinets and control cabinets at uh, West Kiwa Power Station you will bring up the bearing system and this is what you'll be able to see so this is great that at one level I can have the managers looking at this level and everyone else looking at this level, but as they need to, they can dive down to get more and more granularity and information. So we do a DCS replication, we can do maintenance dashboards, we can do engineering dashboards. Um, obviously, that's all coming through Pi Vision, or uh, we can replicate the process book in there as well. And we also have uh, work in progress at the moment is the ESRI GIS. Uh, we, we hopefully to have that uh, at the end of this month or early next month. So that's our dashboard and information system uh, that we're using. We, we've also embarked on a project called Athena, um, God of Wisdom plus the God of uh, a few other things as well, but we've picked on um, God of Wisdom. One of our problems on site 
is not everybody has all the information. Um, some of that data that comes through needs interpretation. Uh, trends can be missed. A very slow rising trend can be quite easily missed because we consider that that reading is normal because it might have been going up by 0.1 or or that every every month. And we also have varying site expertise. So what we did is we thought about an asset health dashboard and where better to put that was in, in um, asset intellect. There's a lot of red on here. Don't be frightened of the red. We've always said don't be scared of the red because it's something we can work on and it's something we can fix. So the idea is here we've got our um, sites. We have Loyang. That's a, a brown coal generator. And our, at the moment our feed pumps, fans and our turbines haven't been developed yet, but we do have asset dashboards for transformer generation and chemistry. The idea of this is the high-level dashboard. The principal engineers can see what is going on and if anything is, is warning us that there is a problem or there's a change. So, uh, what we look at here is it's a summarisation. It's quick identification of, of conditions. We can standardise the calculations right across our fleet, not letting the sites do the calculations, but standardising them. The beauty of what we've done here is the drill down capability. So if I go to the next page, I go to a Loyang overview. And here under the generator, I can see that which plant, I can see the cooling system, the temperature is all looking good, but my rotor and maybe my generator is of, of a warning. So very quickly, I can see an overview of the site. Future, working with uh, Dimension Software and, and our team will be to put event frame interactions in where when something goes into an alarm condition, we have to acknowledge it, but we have to walk before we can run here. So we're still developing. We go down to the next page and as we can see here, we're now on Loyang Unit 3 Generator. The generator is online. This is bringing all our data together and the screens we saw before were the roll-ups. So the idea here is to bring all our lab results, our live data, our manual entry data, and then being able to do our trends, our calcs, and then put colours to them. So very quickly I can see, well, what was driving that red? I have a top bar temperature of 24, which is 75.5. My problem is, is the deviation. At the low end, this one has gone bad. So we can, we can put a fix in to fix that. That will get rid of that red bar. But if anything changes here, I can quickly see. So everything that we see with a green label or, or it's highlighted green, there's alarms behind that. A, a high alarm and a high, high alarm, which will go red. So all those parameters are being monitored. Now, we did blow a generator up years ago Actually, it's not that long ago because we were draining water out of that generator. The problem was the operators knew they were draining the water, but they didn't tell anybody. The engineer knew that the dew point was out of service monitor, but he didn't tell anybody. Um, at the end of the day, that generator blew up. And when we actually did the root cause, we actually found that not everybody had the information together. It was all, all over the place. So this was one way to start to bring that together. Obviously, there's work in progress. We've got a lot of red on the page. We've got a lot of remedial actions to do. <sighs> Reporting. This is a big one for us. Uh, people are moving towards Power BI and other reporting. So one thing that we've been able to do with Asset Intellect is in this reporting structure, we've been able to build one platform giving the right data at the right time. I have my report history here and it's independent of any other system because all I'm doing is linking to it. I don't have to save the data, I can just link to it. And we can we can build this hierarchy as the, the business changes. So it, it's been a real game changer for us to, to be able to get the report now to find it, not think where it is. 
obviously there's links across the top here because when I go to the next tab, I can actually go into that Power BI report. Um, we, and it's his Rahim and Yao's report. And from here, I can drill down even further, um, showing the Power BI report and drilling in to, to where I, I'm looking at, just like I'm using Power BI. In actual fact, we've found people rather use this than the native Power BI because it seems to render better. But this has been huge for us because people aren't now asking where's the data and they give up. They know where to get it. So it's a big, big, big play for us. Uh, the other thing we've been able to manage to do is um, in the reporting, our daily heat maps uh, within our wind portfolio. Um, what we've done is, this has been a difficult one because the wind data is quite difficult. I don't know if people find that around the world. We find it difficult to use within OSI Pi and to get the right information to drive change. So a lot of the time it, it has been overviews that we need. Um, and what we've done is we've pulled this data out of, of OSI Pi, run some Python scripts over that, and then we can look at the power heat map um, as an overview, and that really helps us get a, a view on lazy turbines and misperforming turbines. We've found that we've had turbines that have been um, derated uh, for years because of a sensor, but they were available. We thought they were running fine, but they just weren't producing the power. So, and if you're looking at on turbine to turbine basis, we weren't picking that up. But by using a heat map, we can actually find uh, lazy turbines to do that. So pulling the Python code out, saving it as a PDF, viewing it here has, has been, been really beneficial for us. So that's the dashboarding style of area to get the right information to our right people. The next part is the alarm and events. Now, this is probably one of the reasons why we went to the SIS2 um, Dimension software and we actually started to work with them with the alarm and events. One of our problems is you normally have to go to the control system within the power station or within site to get the alarm and events. We know that OSI Pi has an interface for that, but nothing was really out there that could do it. So this allowed us to bring the data into um, Pi, then pull it out, reconstruct it, so we could view it and interact with it. Uh, so now we've got those structured alarms. Um, the I can access this from anywhere uh, in the world practic practically, and that means that when people are working from home during COVID, or they're even on site, they don't have to go and bother the controllers to go have a look, or the control room to go have a look at these alarms. They can do it here. We can add comments. We can um, add a lot more value. We can extract, ex export it to Excel and do further analysis on it. Um, we also have the configurable KPIs. But then that all leads into us being able to do alarm management, which without this we haven't really been able to do because we weren't able to track and, to be honest, our operators were being flooded with alarms. Now, this isn't, this isn't necessarily real data. Um, this is some of the test stuff that we've done, but we've been able to set and start working on building these KPIs so we can start tracking them because until we track them, we can't action them. Um, as I said, it is work in progress. Um, we're putting an update in now to hopefully give us more capabilities and, and then align um, all our business units together and do that. Um, so I know it's reasonably quick. Uh, I just wanted to show you what we were doing within Asset Intellect. So I'd like to say thank you and I would open up to any questions um, that we might be doing, or if someone's got some pointers to do something a bit better, all good. Happy days. Oh, thanks, Mark. Uh, that was a, that was a good good one for the um, asset intellect and uh, yeah, coming from the uh, ICT in a power 
company with that background, it was I fully understand your comments on the IT <laughs> pushing stuff down. <laughs> so, uh, so for the questions, uh, I would actually be interested to hear how long did it take overall to get the asset intact to the point where it is right now? Okay, we've probably been going now for a year and a half. Um, one thing we've done is version control, going through all our power, uh, our, our Pi visions um, to get it going. One thing we've, we've really started to, to find now is that reporting area. People are coming to us now saying, we want this in here. Um, can we put it in? So one of our limiting factors is actually our people on site um, to be able to work through the workload. But I'd say we've been going full time with what we've got here about a year and a half. All right. Did you, was it easy to bring in new systems into Asset Intellect? Or, and how did you decide what to bring in first? Okay, no, it is. It, uh, we've been pleasantly surprised how easy it is. Uh, Pi Vision was an, uh, a, a quick and easy one. We got that one up very quick. So our dashboards was quite quick. The main thing that, you, that is a challenge is the structure. To sit down and then work out how you are going to structure the system for your business so that it's scalable and makes sense. So that reporting area, um, uh, that had uh, probably three to four months of changing around. Um, the one thing we have done is pretty much given two people the ability to to administrate uh, this program uh, to make sure that we have the administration and governance uh, that we need to make sure that people know that the data they're getting is correct. The other challenge that we did strike was the alarm and events. We're working with sites to get that data through um, and it's not something that happens overnight. Um, it has been um, a good work in progress. Uh, we still haven't got our, our hydro uh, system and a lot of our renewable systems in, uh, but that is work in progress. And, uh, and what are the plans for the for the future? Where are you going next with this? Oh, the 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 next one we've got is Esri GIS, uh, bringing that into the system. Um, we've got our business units, uh, our gas and um, our mines uh, using Esri. So that's going to be a bit of work for us, uh, getting that into the system. I don't fully yet understand how that's going to look and feel. Um, it's going to be a, a ex explore for us. We've got to deliver a heap more um, dashboards um, to engineering and, and maintenance dashboards that we're, we're trying to get in. We've only really just scratched the surface in, in the dashboard area. And what, what we find is there will be pockets of excellence. So you'll find an environmental person that will build five, six, seven dashboards and can we get these in asset intellect? Yeah, sure. Um, and what we're finding now is people who are sitting there who have ignored us are sort of starting to say, well, I'm being left out here. I want one too. So the it will populate over time. It's not going to be something that populates uh, in the first six months unless you've got your Pi system uh, fully developed. So when we get actually when we get to Pi system, when you started this uh, project, did you already, but at that time, have a f uh, well-built uh, high asset framework structure uh, on top of which you then set up the uh, asset intellect and kind of get everything to so show up in correct context? Or was the AF redesigned too at that stage? I would say we didn't have a great AF. We had asset frameworks. They were developed by site, but the one thing we necessarily didn't have the people or the tools to govern them correctly. So we put in what we what we could um, 
and we are left with quite a bit of legacy AF systems that I can't quite get rid of yet because I still have some screens that I need to transition to a new AF. Um, I would say we were we were we weren't bad, um, but we were in the development stage of those AFs for sure. Oh, all right. So, yeah, I think that we covered the questions uh, pretty well here. So, um, Jan Eric, you have anything else here in mind? Okay, uh, Johnny, thank you. I think we'll wrap it up. So, I'll just uh, mm. thank Mark and uh, AGL. Thank you for great presentations today. We really appreciate your ability and the willingness to share your experience. Um, thank you to all attendees for your questions. As Johnny mentioned, we will follow up on any unanswered questions. Uh, please also reach out if you have any further questions or would like us to organize a presentation or demo to dig deeper into the capability of asset intellect. Um, and finally, thank you Dimension Software for co-organizing this event. Thank you so much everyone.